Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is Sheila Bila coming to you. I wanted to just talk to y'all a little bit about the Destiny Payne interview on Dear on the Dear Future Wife podcast. And I believe his name was Letaria Whitfield. And um, I'll have the description and everything below his name and all that stuff. So, but I really did listen to the podcast the entirety it was like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that and it really gave a lot of insight onto destiny and who she is and you know she talked about love and marriage huntsville and her marriage and her ex-boyfriend um marion the producer of the show love and marriage huntsville but um he started the segment in regards to her and her marriage like um her husband actually married her to hate her and I was just like, wow, I never even heard of that term before. You married me to hate me. Like, you don't like somebody that bad. You married them to put them in torture and to put them in pain. And I was just like, that's really crazy. And I never looked at her relationship like that because number one, she never told us about it. And every time when she would do interviews, she always said that she couldn't talk about it because um, of legal, of the legality and everything about it. And Come to find out, she, in her divorce, technically she's been divorced for what, about three years or so now, two or three years, but her divorce is actually like a, it's like it could come with, um, he can make changes to the divorce anytime he wanted to. Just say, for instance, if he's seen her talk about him in a way that he didn't like, he can pull up the divorce and say, well, she can't do this anymore. So it was like their divorce, but that there were contingencies that he could often make changes to. And I was like, well, I didn't know that. I thought when you were divorced, you were just divorced. But anyway, so she talked about that. And then she talked about the whole Crime Stoppers incident. And she said she learned about the Crime Stoppers because Martel from Love and Mary Chunsville, he actually called her and was like, hey, girl, you all right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You over here on the Crime Stoppers. Is everything okay with you? And um, she was like, yeah, but why am I on Crime Stoppers? You know, she ain't committed no crime. Because even when I did the, um, the video about her, and the Crime Stopper situations, I was like, Crime Stoppers is petty. So they put in people in jail for utility bills. Like the man was like, you can put this water bill in my name <laughs> and then turn around and be like, no, you forged my signature. Like y'all going on Crime Stoppers over bills. And she was like, the only reason why she was on the Crime Stoppers is because she's Destiny Payton and she was on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I maybe, you know what? Crime Stoppers had blew up when Kiki was on there. So I guess people was looking out for her then. But anyway, so she just didn't understand why he did that. So she was like, this man got me in jail over something that I did not do. And she said that he tried to embarrass her. And the reason why she did record herself going into the HPD, Huntsville Police Department, is because she said, well, it was already public. So I just want to let the people know that um, it is what it is. I'm going to take care of my business and this will not stop me from, you know, I guess, succeeding in life. She said she was going through the storm, but she prayed for peace. So she had peace in her storm. And um, I thought that was really good. But anyway, um, but she was like, out of all the times, because she also revealed that her husband was abusing her, you know? And she said she picked up the phone many of times to report him about the allegations and she could never pull the trigger. And I was like, wow, Destiny, if you would have told us about this stuff on Love and Marriage Huntsville, maybe the people wouldn't have not liked you so much. You would have had that empathy, that sympathy card, you know? But yeah, she said he, it was very abusive you know and she said that she even went to like therapy and and the therapist was like if you don't get out of this then this man could possibly unalive you and i was like god i didn't and that's why she was so mad because the dude back at the house he mentally and physically doing whatever he can just to you know bring her down and i was just like i that was just crazy to me um and also she was like i wouldn't even call the you know when even when she tried to call the police she still didn't go through with it but he can pretty much have her in jail over some utility bills that it's not even in her name and she was just like you know what she said um for so long um 
you've had, he says, he says, this person for so long hadn't even spoke about your abuse and you haven't, and you didn't even know about it, but you have, you know, real trauma. And then, um, she said that you got the, you got, I can't even read. It says that you got from that marriage and it was a whole lot of aha moments. I needed just for myself and my growth. And then she says, and accepting the things and coming to the realization of where I was actually being married to someone that now seeks pleasure in her pain. And I was like, yeah, dog. So you marry somebody that really hated you. And then she also talks about like before she even married him, even though they were in a long distance relationship, she talked about before she even married him, um, she would see how she he was with his grandmother and his mother and all of these things. And she felt as if she was getting someone that's going to protect and provide and just be there for her and all of this. But come to find out, he was like, and she said that it seems as if he was pushed into being a pro a, 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 a provider for his grandmother and a provider for his mom and a caretaker for these people. So now he's married. He was like, well, shoot, I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> I don't already done that. I want to do something different. So that's, that's kind of crazy. But anyway, so she talked about that and um, she did talk about the whole squatter situation when it came down to her mortgage and she said she only wanted him to pay a year's worth of mortgage and then she would refinance them, refinance it and then get her house back. But then that was a whole ordeal to where, you know, he ended up not signing over the mortgage. Well, not was it not signing the mortgage back over to her, which made it seem as if she was squatting. And that was real trifling. And you know, this woman got your child or whatever. So I just didn't think that that was a good look. Um, and then she talked about, you know, when she was a kid, because she was going through some type of therapy and the therapist was bringing up things that happened to her when she was a kid, like trauma, come to find out her mom was, you know, in the drug epidemic in Detroit and she got caught up and she got taken away from her mom and was put in the foster care system for about a year. And she also stated that, you know, she was essayed by some I guess friends of the family's house that she would go over. And um, that's actually how she ended up in the foster care system because the mom left and then the friends of the people wanted to take her over to somebody else's house. And she was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Cause she remember last time she was there, he was, you know, touching on her or whatever. And she was a kid. She was like, I don't want to go. And her brother was actually with her. And her brother was like, no, we not going over there. She don't want to go. We not going. The mama said that he was going to come get us later, which they lied. And then the po they ended up somehow riding around looking for the mom with the police or something like that. And she actually saw her mom telling the police officer, they got my mama, they got my mama right there. But the mom, child, she, I guess she was strung out. I don't know. But they took her down to the foster care system, her and her brother. And eventually they ended up getting split up. That's how she ended up with her father. And her brother ended up with the people on her, on the mom's side. And, and she also said she has like eight brothers and sisters. And three of them, she don't even know. She said if she put them, if you put them in a room right now with her brothers or sisters, she wouldn't even know it, you know. But I was just like, dang, Destiny, you done been through a lot. That's very awakening because, and she said, that's why she was, that's why she was kind of, I guess, angry all the time or, you know, dealing with past trauma. Then you with this man that then divorced you at eight months. And then he talking about you a squad in the house and you going through the COVID and all this other stuff. It's just a lot of drama and trauma. And then you got, you're on this reality TV show and they're putting you in situations to where you're like, I didn't think that this was going to go like this. She said, it's almost felt as as if she was back in high school. And then she said that she had friends on the show or quote unquote friends that they would be good before the camera started rolling. And then when the camera started rolling, we hashing out old beef. Like I thought we just, you know, overcame this beef or, or this, um, situation in our, a situation in our, um, you know, friendship, but now we got to do it again on camera. 
And so she said she was unprepared for that. And she also said the reason why she didn't come back to Love and Mary Huntsville because the money went right. So, yeah, but we all know who she was talking about because the only person that she really got into it with was Melody. And then she said the high school, when she felt like she was back in high school, it was when the whole um, Galentine's party went hun. And, 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 um, what's that girl? Stormy started getting into it. This was up. This was up. You know, all of that happened. But, um, I thought that was very awakening because if they, if Melody and her hashed out a argument or a fight that they had, why y'all talking about it? And, you know, just for ratings, but that's reality TV for you. It is what it is. And then, um, she also brings up the ex-boyfriend remember the boyfriend that she quote unquote had that you know she was in love with the one from st louis she been knowing every for what what she said 13 30 years i know it's been a long time she said she's been doing it for a long time and um come to find out the producer her producer on Love and Marriage Huntsville that she confided into, that she confided in, that she, you know, told a lot of secrets to, that producer of Love and Marriage Huntsville ended up marrying her ex-boyfriend. I was like, what they do that at? I guess they do that on Love and Marriage Huntsville. That is crazy to me. And then Destiny said, well, she told me that that was her cousin. So the producer on Love and Marriage Huntsville that was friends with Destiny said that Destiny ex-boyfriend, whom is his, her future hood, which is her husband, was, they was cousins. So Destiny like, so you married your cousin? <laughs> I said, you married your cousin? You know, kissing cousins. Hey, the Huntsville, Mississippi, Arkansas. That's what they say they do. But it is what it is. Um, Yeah, and then she also said that the producer, because she said her and the producer were actual friends, like on the show and off the show. And she said the way that they met was at her birthday party a couple years prior. And now she said they're trying to get a reality show. I said, so really, yo ex-boyfriend was an opportunist because she said when she ended up getting on love and marriage Huntsville, that's when he came right back around pressing her and pressing her because he thought he was going to be on TV. So then he left destiny was like, well, destiny ain't doing what she's supposed to do. And uh, hooked up with the producer because he felt like this producer finna put him on TV. So he just want to be famous. Well, I guess, well, I guess the, the, the good part was, they had broke up five months prior to them actually getting married to the producer, to the cousins, to the kissing cousins, the producer and the ex-boyfriend before they um got married. So I guess, I mean, at least you don't, I mean, you may not know of that he wasn't cheating on you. But yeah, and also the girl said that, Destiny said that the girl, the producer girl sent Destiny a text saying pretty much apologizing and saying like, you know, we just clicked and about, about their relationship. I was like, destiny. So this lady is messaging you because she knows she done quote unquote took your man. Well, y'all was broken up, but that was still your man. And now she want to apologize and all of this stuff and say, they just clicked and they didn't mean for it to happen and all that other stuff. That was crazy to me. I was like, God, dog, Destiny, you you take a lick and keep on ticking, huh? But anyway, so um, that with that, and I think I got the gist of everything with Destiny. I just want, and they ended out in prayer and all of that, which was really good. Oh, yes, yeah, she did talk about her father. Her father was like, what, 73, 72 years old, and he has cancer. But at the end of the day, she said her father is her ride or die. She did um talk about that brother that, um, that she went to the foster care system with they that um they got separated. He ended up passing away. She got emotional about that. But Destiny says she still wants to, she's not jaded. She still wants to be married again. And she says that um she is dating. 
and she just wants, and she don't want to just be married. She wants to be in a marriage. She wants the love and she wants the protection and she wants to just relax and not have to have her guard up all the time. She wants to have her person. And I completely understand that. But um, y'all, y'all check it out. I just skimmed over the whole, um, I just skimmed over it and y'all just go take a listen. It was really good. It's about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, if y'all want to skip through and listen to the parts, the juicy parts y'all want to listen to, go ahead, do that too. But I'm wishing Destiny the best. I'm really wishing her the best. I know some people really don't like her because they said that about the whole Melody situation. But hey, I'm like, child, whatever. But I'm going to be fair. And yeah, go listen to it if you would like. And... That's pretty much it, y'all. This is Sheila B. Love, like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you think. Let me know if you listen to it, and let me know what nuggets you pulled from it with her, because she really did. She got in really deep when she started talking about her ex-husband and her trauma and things like that. It was really, really good, because I didn't know that she was, you know, abused. I didn't know that she was essayed. I didn't know that her ex-husband was like, that ta da 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 ta 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 on her, you know, and all of that. The whole cousins thing with the producer and the, you know, her ex boyfriend boo. But anyway, y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think about this. And y'all have a great day. Bye.